All right, it is time for day nine of the Radiance mod. So today we are going to go ahead and be testing out the DigiPeak experience. So hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. Honestly, I'm expecting it to be a little bit easy. We are kind of still taking advantage of some of the more OP items that we had. And considering how well we dealt with raid bosses, I assume this will be a non-issue to deal with. So yeah, we're just gonna run forward see if there are any sticking points, note those out, maybe do Scorch, maybe do, do Kino, stuff like that. So yeah, let's get started. I just explained to the mod dev what I was going to do for DigiPeak, and they said good luck with Peak. And now I'm slightly worried that it's going to be like super cursed. Hope it's not. Okay, so I forgot, but I have been alerted that there were a couple updates and I've gone ahead and skimmed through a little bit here. So... Seraph vendors apparently were not providing seraphs like they were supposed to, so they weren't giving some of like the unique changes or the unique items that were supposed to be in there apparently. Legendary drop rates have been significantly changed so that they're not just everywhere, and I am being called out on this one, so let's go, I've changed the mod again. XP gains from enemies that were a much higher level than you were significantly reduced, because of how we were messing around in Digi Peak, so once again, that's on us. Uh, further changes to weapon, grenade, and health vendors were made, including increasing the quality of the item of the day, and removing skins from item of the day pools. Okay. And then legendaries may still occasionally pop up, but getting legendaries in actual spots of vendors is less likely to happen. So that is a deserved fix. It should have gotten that, which is fair. Most of the rest of this were not necessarily too important for us. Gage's Shockstorm skill, now instead of requiring a critical kill, will only require crits to proc, and its damage and radius is increased, so we might consider doing that. And then also more pep, been changed to give additional shock damage and shock status effect duration. Wires Don't Talk has been lowered from 6% to 5% per grade to go ahead and compensate for this, that makes sense. And then a couple of these don't necessarily seem to be related to anything that we're particularly doing. So the rest of these we can assume are probably just updates that shouldn't affect our character too much. Alright, so with the update in mind, we are going to go ahead and take a look here. More Pep increases shock damage by 5% per level. Wow. And then also shock damage duration? Okay. And then of course these are relatively the same. So that's good for us. We can go ahead and take full effect to full benefit of this. Sure we miss out on a little bit of damage here now, but we get way more just by having this as well, so that's cool. And then I'll just probably spec out the tree pretty normal. I do want to get Shockstorm now to test it though, which is kind of a problem. But I want to test it. Okay, so for our new skill spread here, now that we are respect, I went ahead and just ignored Ride, Ride the Lightning. I haven't been taking good use of its movement speed anyway, so it should be fine. We do have more pep, of course. I've spec into Shockstorm because it does cause a Shockstorm on crit now. This, of course, does have an internal cooldown of a couple seconds, but that's still more free damage, so why not take that? And then the rest of the trees I've pretty much left to be the same. So, yeah, no major changes, just kind of these here. Alright, so we got a couple tank boys here. Yeah, we can still sort of just kind of do this to them. That's fine. Hmm. Wreath doesn't care about the storm that much. To be fair though, he is a little bit healthier compared to a lot of the other mobs in Peak. Okay. First Peak run is down. I am now apparently aware of the fact that Digi Peak should be more interesting the further in I get. Still don't quite know what that means, but I guess we'll find out pretty quick. Okay, so, yep, this is the change. So, DigiPeak gives you OP levels, but the max item level is still level 80. Now, 
This does just mean that Digipeak is simply done for the extra challenge, and it also means that Binary is still a worthy pearl farm, but he might be a little harder to get to. And I'm assuming based off of the way that the difficulty has scaled so far that it'll feel okay. I think the amount of resistance enemies get has been reduced a little bit to compensate for this, probably, hopefully. And yeah, the overall scaling is way lower, so it should feel fine. I guess one positive thing you could take away from Digipeak not giving you higher OP level equipment is that you don't need to go re-farm all the time. It's very new player friendly in that regard. You like how I say it's new player friendly and while it is, this mod just fixes problems with the game? Two different takes on one issue? Well, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Because, like, my... I don't... Hmm. You see, I think you're approaching this from a position where you assume that having to farm or grind a little bit is a problem. Which is fair. Having a personal disliking of that is fair. But it's certainly a game genre, and it certainly thrives in a lot of communities. I.e. World of Warcraft or, like, even Diablo. Maybe not the newer Diablos, those are kind of just, like, instant gratification machines. But, like, I, I get it. And it's fair. I do get that. So, being on OP3, working towards OP4, of course, everything still feels relatively fine. I haven't really ran into hard difficulty, but to be fair, I am also very used to the game being punishing, and I am sort of taking advantage of the grog to its fullest extent. The lack of panic heal from getting lifesteal is very noticeable, I will say that. Being required to actually sit and heal is punishing, but it feels fine so far. So I think I'm okay with it. But yeah, I mean, grindy games are a tried and true genre. So, I don't think there's inherently a problem with them. I just think if you don't enjoy them, you won't enjoy it. Because, of course not. It just depends on the person. And modding a 13-year-old game to make it more enjoyable for yourself and potentially others is also good. I'm okay with that. Alright, Black Queen. Oh my, that trap, please. Give them a chance. Well. Thanks, DT. Very cool. Okay, jumping over to Binary real quick to go ahead and test out how he feels. I'm assuming we could probably give him the raid boss special here. So go ahead and try to back up Drunk Effects. Shoot them wildly off into the distance. Maybe switch to a V shield. Maybe switch to like an anarchist for the flat damage we get from it. Let Death Trap heal our shield. Well, that's scary. He's still very alive. Okay. No problem. What about this? Okay. Binary has a health bar. Understandable. So, we can definitely say that uh, Binary is a little more beefy, a little more thick. So, if you are going to run into Digipeak, make sure you have a setup ready for him. Probably good crits. Probably something to not break the top turret unless you really need to. Stuff like that, basically. So yeah, it seems like we actually do need to go get some equipment to make this fight actually work. So what I'm initially thinking is maybe just a Lady Fist and a B Shield will be enough. We do have a Shock one here, which is, you know, it's it's great and all. But if we could get a Corrosive one so that we have a matching element bonus, run it with a Legendary Anarchist for the extra flat gun damage there, Maybe we could pull this off a little easier. 
So that's what we're going to try to go do. So we got exactly the role I was asking for. Vlad off grip, magazine size accessory. This should just be a good B delivery system right here. So we are going to try to use that against binary. All right, so back here at binary, going to apply the slag because, you know, of course. And from here, it is just probably going to be a nice little slow cook fight. This is why we like to have lifesteal. Yeah, I do think I'm starting to see our difference in what we find enjoyable in the game. Because I kind of understand how you could see the whole Healthgate lifesteal loop as being boring. But at the same time, having to sit out of battle for a long time just to heal my entire health bar back does feel kind of bad. Knowing that in the next five seconds it could be bottomed out again really fast. Pro tip, Hoplite doesn't reduce your movement speed. Okay. So I've gone ahead and taken some suggestions from the mod dev about how to possibly become more tanky. And I, to be fair, this is working. So the lack of lifesteal is not necessarily a bad thing. But I do have a much heavier emphasis on my shield, which I am not used to. This is Rocco's big gun. Is this head sledges? Okay cool. So, yeah. I guess avoiding the normal Borderlands 2's player's expectation of how they're going to get life back, and instead really just investing heavily into what my character is supposed to be doing. Blood Soak Shields, for example, and also having that paired with Unstoppable Force might make my character into a much thicker character, and then I don't have to worry about things like Healthgate anyway. And I can take advantage of my lack of health a little bit better, which is initially what they were telling me to try with the character. So this makes sense. This is fair. I do get it. That being said though, I will of course need to test this at OP10 and see if I can still play the game without just getting absolutely farmed. And that's going to be a really hard thing to do, considering binary sort of is, well, rather thick. You know, I can weirdly see the BL3 uh, coming out with the idea of just making an uber-thick shield and then not caring so much about the health bar. Which, I mean, makes sense because one of the skills is literally just called Redline. But I, I see that now. That's one of the weird things about playing a mod, too, is like... I'm sure I would have had more vanilla hate, like health maintenance experience if I were playing Krieg. Krieg sadly was the least change, so he is as close to vanilla as you can get. Gotcha. But yeah, like if I were to play Krieg, I'd probably have a much more vanilla health maintenance experience. And my brain would be like, hmm, <laughs> vanilla mechanic. <laughs> but that's not the point, though. The point is to test stuff. And if there were ever a character that would be much, much different, it's this one. Because it's getting... It's like destroying my BL2 player instincts. Which is not a bad thing. I'm just... I was just severely confused. Initially. Also, there's no reason to actually play at OP levels to farm gear for OP levels, which is... I mean, like, still... That's fine, because it means I can knock out all the OP levels if I did have the good equipment already. So that's, that's kind of fair. I would be much more inclined to skip these OP levels, though. Because, well... If I know that eventually I'm just going to need uber min-maxed gear anyway, I would just skip the parts where I don't. And then deal with the parts where I do. But I, I get it. It is supposed to be the absolute max difficulty at the same time. I have gone ahead and grabbed some equipment here really quick to go ahead and knock out the rest of the OP levels 
I will admit, I don't necessarily like how they are changed entirely, but I do understand that this is simply another player's perspective on what a an interesting endgame scaling is, so that's fair. But it is rough for me. So, yep, we are here. We're gonna go ahead and test out our mystery mouse tools on the guy. See how it goes. Maybe equip the hoplite so that we can be the thick character we are meant to be. Kind of just have to see if we are actually any amount of thick when looking at this guy. Because odds are we're probably not. Let's see. Okay, you know what? That's actually respectable, being able to jump into that laser and not instantly get destroyed for it. That's relatively good, I will say. Also, no reason to go refarm gear or anything, since our gear leveling stops at level 80. So this is legitimately going to be my strat from here on. I could sit here and duke it out with the boss, and apparently we are capable now that we are thicker. But I, this is just how I'll probably do it. You know what? Yeah. That's actually really thick for this difficulty, I will say. And the fact that it is a level 80 shield, don't turn at me like that. The fact that it is a level 80 shield and I do still have that level of tank, that's that's pretty fair, I guess, I will say. So, yeah, I guess the tankiness is reasonable if you just build more into what the character is wanting you to actually build into. So, if you're playing a character in this mod and it looks like they are heavily shield-centric, probably get a tanky shield with them, and that'll probably help you out a lot. But yeah, the vanilla BL2 experience for experienced players consists of just being a little health-trading goblin who will go in there, deal some damage, panic heal if they need to, and then just go back to dealing damage, because like, lol, who cares, I'm alive again. And that's especially true on Mayan Krieg. Mayan Krieg are the ones, and Sal. Sal can also really get away with that. Mainly, Sal can get away with that. And... There we go. We have hit OP-10. Through slightly questionable means. But... I didn't particularly like how Binary is balanced. I... Yes, you could probably duke it out with him slowly over time, and you would be tanky enough to go ahead and tolerate it if you stack into your character properly. So I don't particularly want or have to complain about it, but it is very different from the normal player experience, so you will have to get used to that. And of course, now that we are at OP 10, I would normally call it the end of a day, but, I do want to see what does our damage look like? What are we looking at here? Because our items cap out at level 80, but we are at OP 10. So, who knows? The developer didn't even want me to get to OP 10. They thought I, I wouldn't be crazy enough, but like, haha, yeah. Uh, so, we'll actually get to see what the absolute highest difficulty looks like. Now, keep in mind, in this mod, OP levels are nothing but artificially inflated difficulty. Which, yeah, that looks about right. Because you don't get any extra benefit for being at this absolute pinnacle level. There is no reason... There is no reason... Can you... There is... Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you for healing that rabid. Now, promptly kill it, please. Thank you. But yeah, there is no reason to play at OP10 in this mod. You could literally just get all of your equipment at level 80. And then if you really needed, like, pearls, you could go to OP5, kill binary, and then get them that way. 
and then never go beyond that, and you would miss nothing. So it is all artificial, exceptionally artificial difficulty in this mod, which I'd still want to say makes it more new player friendly, because they're not missing out if they don't do this, and it's only more of a punishment for players who, like, really sweat the game a lot. So I think it's an okay change to have. Alright, Death Trap has left the battlefield, so we're gonna go ahead and shoot shoot some guys here with this level 80 Hellfire that we have. Of course, the Hellfire isn't necessarily that strong of a gun normally. I mean, it does great. I'm not gonna, like, lie about that, but if we're looking at doing absolute highest level content, I wouldn't normally trust one. But it's, I mean, it's, it's putting in work. It's trying to. Considering it's level 80 and these guys are level 90, that's not bad. And then, of course, we can try something like a Jacob's Grip Crammed Herald. Crammed, yes. And it's gonna probably take a little bit longer. Maybe this difficulty is a little bit steep. But it's, once again, not needed. You don't have to do it. There are no signs or anything forcing you to do it. Most people don't even touch OP levels in the first place to begin with. So this only affects the people who could probably deal with it anyway. Especially if you mod the game. Because let's be honest, how many new players are modding a game and then trying the absolute hardest difficulty stuff at the same time? Not many, probably. So, yeah. Probably fine. This gun is doing good work. And it's just a different player's take on max difficulty. So, not bad. This will be it for today. Tomorrow we will go ahead and test out a couple builds at OP10. We'll see what we can actually get to work. See if we can deal with raid bosses still somehow. Probably just Pete or Hyperius is what I'll really stick and focus on. And, yeah, that'll do it. So, day nine.